In today's video, we're going to be talking about a clinical trial showing first promising results for treatment of long COVID. That's the first news I wanted to mention. And another great news I wanted to let you know about, I'm very, very excited, is that the very company that was sponsoring that clinical trial that showed very promising results, I went, entered into discussions with this company and there will be my first sponsor. So that's fantastic news. I've been waiting for such an opportunity for a long time and there's been different offers, but I really wanted to find something that I'm very passionate about and I'm very excited about the vagus nerve neuromodulation and improving its function. And this is exactly what this company does. Key wording is that they have a certified medical instrument for that very purpose. This is why it was used in a clinical trial. And that's important because not all instruments out there are certified for that purpose. So that's very important. This is very valuable for me, why I wanted to continue uh, working with these individuals. And because of the fact that now we can collaborate together, I will be able to provide you with a discount code for that very instrument. All right, let's, ooh, very bright sun. Let's get started. I might have to turn around. <laughs> But let's get started on this. Uh, I really wanted to let you know about this super cool clinical trial, which I think is actually the first of its kind that not only was using long, um, finding methods to treat long COVID, but also via the vagus nerve neuromodulation. So why, why? vagus nerve neuromodulation the authors obviously suspected that inflammation might be one of the prominent prominent reasons as to why we, we see long COVID symptoms and it's very well understood from past studies that vagus nerve neuromodulation can decrease inflammation that is so well worked out it has its own name that's uh, called cholinergic anti-inflammatory pathway. We've discussed this before in one of the videos and therefore the, the authors of that study from Belgium wanted to see could we reduce the symptoms of long COVID by reducing the inflammation. And the reason why, of course, they wanted to do this study is because of the fact that at the moment there actually is no approved treatment for this syndrome they refer to as long COVID syndrome and uh, the outcome of the study is that it worked exceedingly well basically there were, it helped all of the participants to recover from what they were suffering from so what was done there was 20 people involved in this small study all of whom were in good health prior to being infected by the virus and once they were infected they experience persistent problems, symptoms, health problems. The minimum of minimum length of 12 weeks and for some even longer, okay? Now, what were they suffering from? The, I'll give you just the top five symptoms. Everyone discussed fatigue. Everyone suffered from fatigue and this wasn't just any fatigue, it was it was major fatigue where it was basically interfering with the quality of life. So that was number one. Number two, with about 85% of all participants, they, were, they discussed um, experiencing pain. Now, mostly that was headaches, but it also could include chest pain or unusual tingling sensations in the limbs. Now, next in line where it was... Um, cognitive difficulties. So about 80% of the participants mentioned that. So what does that mean? This is basically having memory problems, difficulty concentrating on things, even for some reported difficulty spelling words. So, and there is a, a gamut of, uh, of different effects under that single term. Next in line was difficulty breathing. And this could range from moderate to severe. And then finally, and that was about 65% of participants, and finally 50% discussed uh, showing digestive problems. So what does that mean? That usually typically refer to having acute diarrhea. So those are the problems that these individuals presented with. Now, what 
was done with them. Now this is this is where they used this apparatus. Again, key message that it's certified for medical use. And the way it worked is that you clip this apparatus to to <laughs> this part of your ear right there, and it sends impulses and. Mm, the apparatus is pre-programmed to how these impulses are supposed to be sent and the only thing that the patients were able to control is the degree of how of amplitude so basically how powerful the signals sent were and it had to be just to the level of like below discomfort level okay and um, they did this for 10 days and they did it for 35 minutes each day. And you were free to do whatever you wanted uh, during use of the apparatus. So very simple procedure. And they were measured on day zero. So first day, I guess, uh, day five, and then day 10, and then seven days or a week after, after the procedures were finished to see how long the effect effects of this treatment lasted okay and now what was measured let's talk about that really quick so first of course the severity of the syndrome of long COVID syndrome was measured so basically the way this was done they listed the symptoms and each symptom degraded from 0 to 10 and then that was added all together to determine how severe the actual condition was for each individual Okay, so there's that. They also measured certain physiological parameters. And that was um, how strong their dominant hand was. So they used this grip test to see whether the strength changed. And then finally, they also measured blood oxygen saturation. Or basically, in other words, that measured the capacity of the blood to carry oxygen so and then finally they measured cytokines so cytokines are chemi chemicals or molecules released by by the immune system in order to enact its effects and uh, they measured inflammatory cytokines to see whether their levels were reduced through through the treatment of this vagus nerve neuromodulation so that was the primary goal of the study. And then, of course, to see whether, whether the symptoms could be improved as well. All right. So then what did they find, found? So the first one, and basically the take-home message, the results were just astounding, astoundingly good. Everyone showed improvement. So the first figure of this paper showed that you could see improvement in the severity of the disease over time and that and there was dramatic reduction of the symptoms that they that these individuals suffered from and that persisted after the treatment was done after after the measurements were completed or stimulations were completed okay and or I think the terminology use uh, sessions is was the, is the terminology used Oh, and I don't know if I mentioned each session. So it was done for 10 days and each session was just 35 minutes. So not really long. And um, so the market improvement. They also measured fatigue specifically. Why fatigue? Why the focus on fatigue? is because of the fact that um, that's the biggest problem reported. And again, there was a dramatic, dramatic improvement for, for all participants and once again, that improvement lasted week after all of the sessions were completed. Okay, so again, really, really good news. Now, what they also measured was the depression score. And the, again, there was a, an improvement but um, through the sessions. But the authors mentioned it's not that the participants were depressed. It was more like they were sad, feeling sad or preoccupied. And there was a marked improvement, but again, it's not like that they were less depressed over time, rather they became more optimistic. And both the authors of the publication, as well as the participants themselves, were claiming that this 
improvement of this depressive score was most likely attributed to the fact that there was an improvement in their symptoms and therefore whatever was ailing them, of course, was no longer a problem that they had to contend with, okay? So I thought that was also very interesting. Now, in terms of the, the physiological measurements, there was here the results were much more modest, but nevertheless significant. So there was a modest improvement in the, in the grip strength for the participants, as well as small but still significant improvement in the blood oxygen saturation. Okay, so, and then finally, for the cytokines, for the cytokines, here's where basically they didn't succeed with their hypothesis because there was no change in cytokines at all. And so the levels remain very similar um, from before the session started and after. So that was a surprise because from past, it's very well understood that neuromodulation of the vagus nerve can alter levels of inflammatory cytokines. That's what that procedure is actually famous for. And the authors didn't address it as to why. And I was wondering perhaps maybe if the length of measurement, time measurement was increased, they would have seen the improvement, but we don't know. Nevertheless, it was a very, very successful trial because of the remarkable improvement. And the improvement was, as I mentioned, was seen by everyone and the improvement was seen across all symptoms. Just some took longer to recover than others, and the ones that took the longest to recover were the abdomo, abdomo, <laughs> abdominal pain and the diarrhea. All right, so very, very promising, basically excellent, promising results. Now, in terms of side effects, this was also interesting, so I wanted to let you know about that. Majority reported no side effects, but some did report. And this, well, how, what was defining the side effect is any, any change in a participant within the first 20 of, 24 hours of, of the session and pretty much all symptoms that were observed, they all disappeared between one session to another, which is basically from one day to another. And the most common side effects was athenia. I hope I'm pronouncing this correct, but basically it means unusual physical weakness right and like as i mentioned the recovery was very rapid so the conclusion is it's a very safe method to use for for um, dealing with long COVID as well so that's also really good news now because of the way this trial was designed there cannot discount the fact that there could be placebo effect involved here and what is of course placebo effect that's basically when you see improvement even though there is there is no treatment being added and the authors mentioned there could be a possibility of placebo because of the fact that there could be excitement in relation to using new technology that could help relieve symptoms or the fact that patients were interacting with very empathetic medical staff and all of these influence could be influencing the placebo however the, the authors also concluded that they don't think that placebo was the major contributor um, and the reason why is because number one it took multiple sessions in order for the effect to be seen number two the results of the positive outcomes were long lasting so they also lasted beyond once the sessions were over so seven days after right and um Another one, and finally, it's also is because it wasn't just based on the questionnaires in terms of how you feel. There was also physiological outcomes that were being measured. While they were modest, they were still very real. So therefore, the, the authors concluded, we don't think this is just placebo. We think we're definitely seeing very real effect here. So the authors are very, <laughs> oops, very excited to, to mention that um, this could mean we have a new way of dealing with long COVID and and yeah basically that's it uh, about that clinical trial now this company 
it was very, very thrilled to be working with them just because, again, I want to be able to work with some company. I've been looking for opportunity to bring some solution to all of the different individuals who have been writing their comments and basically the, talking about their suffering, right? So I'm very, very excited to enter this, this uh, working relationship with them. Once again, the link to the purchase of the apparatus is in the description below the discount code is long COVID or one all in one word and you can use that you can use that to consider the purchase of this apparatus all right and again remember this is certified for medical use so and as a consequence i will be also delving a lot more into the vagus nerve um, science and going to basically show you many different angles of when the vagus nerve could be affected in what conditions and under what circumstances vagus nerve neuromodulation can improve the situation. I've been looking at this for a while. I've had a blog post about this and basically this is why um, we've entered into this conversation because it was it's very clear that I've already spent some time investigating this and I'm very very thrilled to to mention that we I finally will have a sponsor of uh, of a product that I can really stand behind and be very excited about. All right, that's all I have for you for now. All I wanted to say is uh, thank you for your support. Please share this, how we grow. It's also very, very valuable information. We want to get it into hands of as many people as possible who might be suffering. And there's a lot. I know there's a lot just because, I, as I mentioned, I've been seeing a lot of comments on that. So please leave your comments as well. And as always, thank you for your support. And also please check out the Patreon account as well, where we show additional topics. Uh, science topics as well and till next video both on the vagus nerve and other topics bye everyone